generation by inviting me to speak. Um, unfortunately, after such a distinguished pa panel uh, who summarized everything on the agenda. However, if I may um, speak uh, in short about the situation of human rights defenders in Bahrain and the, their recognition in, at the Human Rights Council. Of course, when we talk about human rights defenders, we're not talking about an elite group of specific individuals working for organizations. The Declaration on Human Rights Defenders in the United Nations doesn't place specific rules to become a human rights defender. Um, we have thousands of them in Bahrain. We have them sitting in prison. We have them in exile. We have them everywhere around the world. Um, unfortunately, the reprisals that they've been subjected to uh, are those of that should not be subjected to any individual human being. Uh, while I've been here at the UN Human Rights Council so, since the very first day, uh, I've been asking myself the question of what is the most talked about agenda item, um, specifically in the first week and by the high level delegation panel. Uh, the answer I came to every time was the role of civil society representatives and civil society organizations, and part of those are, of course, human rights defenders. Um, we have the delegation from Ireland here, and they said on the, on the, in the first week that states must recognize the importance of the active involvement of civil society representatives. Ban Ki-moon's speech made specific reference to human rights defenders, and the High Commissioner did as well. The Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Defenders had almost 10 paragraphs about the treatment of human rights defenders in Bahrain. She published her communication uh, last week, I believe, and she said specifically that she was alarmed about the amount of complaints she was receiving from Bahrain. Although Bahrain has been responding to them, they haven't been effective. So the environment, work, the environment in which human rights defenders in Bahrain work is that of instability, of int intimidation, of threats of arrest, actual arrest, imprisonment, torture, enforced disappe disappearance, enforced exile, and of course, in, the, in some cases, like Hassan on my left, they would withdraw your citizenship and made stateless if they can. With limited recourse to action from anywhere because of international impunity. On top of that, through legal measures or legislation introduced following the 2011 crisis, civil society organizations that are operated by human rights defenders have been targeted immensely. In 2004, for example, the Bahrain Center of Human Rights was dissolved and its assets seized. Following that, Abdel Hadi Al-Khawaja was arrested <coughs> Um, Abdul Hadi Al-Khawaj is one of my idols and the reasons I work for human rights. And uh, I've written extensively about him and I can't help but comparing him to a person like Mahatma Gandhi, especially during the hunger strike that he went through. He has been arrested several times, beaten in the most brutal manner uh, that I can't even explain to you at the moment, but it's all written in the BICI report. And he's currently serving a life sentence in prison. Nabil Rajab, one of my other idols, is coming up to two years in prison, and his arrest and detention has been uh, denounced as arbit arbitrary by the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention. Such reprisals against human rights defenders and their organizations are illegal. The unfortunate reason for this is because the work of human rights Defenders in Bahrain works. Um, Hussein brought up the example of the Stop the Shipment campaign, uh, which prevented about 3 million Tegas canisters going into Bahrain from South Korea. And the reason for the success of that has been because human rights defenders came together, worked on one specific project with human rights defenders around the globe, um, specifically human rights defenders in South Korea, and managed to the, the success of such a big project. Some of these reprisals have been intimidation campaigns and defamation. Unfortunately, in Bahrain, human rights activism is betrayal. Cooperation with the UN Human Rights uh, Council or its mechanisms is treason. 
And Mariam already gave the example of those human rights defenders who were encircled uh, in national state media following Bahrain's UPR cycle. And this is all for the work that they do. Unfortunately, that work becomes important because the Bahrain government is not carrying out on obligations that it itself has signed for. Bahrain has signed international conventions, international treaties, and when they do not follow up on cases of enforced disappearance, in cases of arbitrary defense, and human rights defenders do, they are then targeted for their work. When the government fails to take action, is it wrong for human rights defenders to take up the role? If we know that the Bahrain government is going to be earning money from international events such as the Formula One, it is the job of human rights defenders to let the international community know where their money is going to. And while this is happening, we see the unfortunate unfortunate scenario where um, civil, independent civil society organizations are being forced uh, to cease their work in Bahrain while the government props up their own organizations. Um, to end with, stop receiving these messages from Bahrain. <laughs> um, I wanted to just shed light on a meeting I had with a mission which I won't name. Uh, who told me that they did not sign a, the part of previous joint statements on Bahrain because they were worried for, about stability in the region, which I was completely shocked about. And I had to remind her that the UN Charter and the preamble of the UN Charter and mostly all other human rights conventions places international peace and security upon the enforcement of human rights by government delegations. And it's not the stability Stability of the region will not be reached through Bahrain breaching its human rights obligations, but through enforcing them, and I believe human rights defenders have an important role in this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm